All right. Thank you, everyone, for your patience while we got just a couple of things settled. This session is about hybrid mode, state of the union. I think there's a little play on words there. And uh, my esteemed colleague, Steve Giddens, who is in the area. Oh, there he is. From Indiana University and myself, I'm, I'm David Goodrum. I'll be your waiter tonight. And this is Lance Spielman, recently of Indiana University and now of RSmart. And Lance, congratulations on your uh, move to RSmart. Thank you, David. Thank you. He tried to sell me insurance earlier today, so <laughs> I... And, I, and I'm up here first to talk for just a couple of minutes before they start showing this stuff. Uh, something for everyone to entertain everyone while the stragglers are coming in. So a little bit of context. And I must admit, I only made four slides for the entire conference and I'm using them in every presentation. If you were in, at the uh, general session, uh, and, and probably most of you were, uh, I'll, I'll try to be very brief. Um, and as I said this morning, the teaching and learning community tried to paint a picture for a vision for all Sakai, the capabilities that you would need for teaching and learning. A lot of these capabilities also quite useful in other academic activities. Um, and with the definition and going into a whole nother level, uh, a pretty rich picture where all of these, uh, I mean, we started with a lot of little pieces and started clumping and clustering those and then actually came to consensus, if you can imagine 30 people coming to consensus about what we called these things and even the definitions for all of them. The, our tools, uh, I, I've, I've taken it a little different tack very recently and tried to use it as a blunt tool as a scorecard in trying to look at our systems, so to speak. And if I look at the core build of Sakai 2x, it seems to me that its strengths are in learning and teaching management, in assessment, in learning activities, and also in uh, social interaction and collaboration. And not that it takes care of every one of these items or that it takes care of any of them fully, but clearly to me this is where its strengths are. For the OAE, as I said this morning, it's a little bit different picture. Its core strengths are largely complementary to the CLE. Um, and, and again, we're still at the beginning of that long journey of filling these out. This isn't complete, but if I were to say where its strengths are, it is in openness and discovery and in content creation and use and reuse in social interaction, collaboration, and in personalization and user autonomy. So why is this relevant to a talk about hybrid? Because if you look at the potential of what hybrid can do just for these two systems, it gives broad coverage, the two systems together get broad coverage across the whole vision that the Sakai Learning Capabilities Design Lenses represent. And well, I, for me, I think that's a good thing. So now a couple of scenarios for possible use. One, you could use hybrid mode as a little bit of a portal to these two systems so that I can go to one place and go to my OAE spaces and groups and from the same place I could go and launch off to my Sakai CLE sites. That, that's not a very deep integration but it's certainly better than sending people to two different places. Um, another a little bit deeper integration is embedding tools. And partially what you're going to see is being able to place a Sakai CLE tool into a Sakai OE page and fill that. So you could create a page, plug in something at random, Samago, and name that page tests. And now you have that 
at least access to that functionality from, in, from within a Sakai OE page. It is even possible to include a CLE tool as one of several elements on a page. My personal opinion is that most of the time that doesn't have, or it sounds very interesting, it doesn't have a lot of practical value right now. Uh, now, if I could send somebody to a particular assessment, that would be nice. But sending somebody to the entire assignments tool, or excuse me, the entire you know, test tool, assessment tool, in the middle of other tools and adding text and pictures and that whole tool sitting there, I, I just don't think that that works. But the way the technology has been approached, it's, it's possible. So those are a couple of scenarios and I think you'll see them uh, today. But now a brief world of word about hybrid being a potential game changer. And one of it is uh, as a potential to eliminate migration woes. And I'm not going to say a lot about this because, in fact, Ian Dolphin talked about this in his keynote uh, a fair amount. It gives a flexibility for migration paths uh, that otherwise you usually don't see. And from the design lenses focus there really is an emphasis in there on being permeable and interoperable. And, and, and this still ties to the prior point about being a game changer in that anyone that's been involved with LS, LMSs or been a user of LMSs has one time or another had to change systems. And all of us are involved in implementations and support of these moves know the burden of moving people from one system to something entirely, completely different. It's a painful process. And it always seems to be necessary. And it even leads to quite understandable questions. If this is the only way the world works, it's like, well, when, when is it going to be completely done? Because then maybe we'll think of going through that long march of making everybody move to an entirely different system. But if these, if these systems are much more permeable and interoperable, then the ability to open up a little bit of functionality of helping people if something has a particular value of having access to it, of being able to integrate it, and going further of not just the convenience of our own two systems, but other systems as well. This is really, a, you know, call it hybrid on steroids uh, at a much greater level than what you're going to see today. But th that's the vision I think we need to work on together and I'd, I'd love to have the opportunity to work with you on that in looking at how we can push the permeability and the interoperability going forward. How our own two systems work with, would work interchangeably with each other, how outside systems would work with us as well. So a little bit tongue in cheek, I want to suggest a, a different name going forward for that vision because hybrid mode kind of describes the little slice that we've carved off so far. And it is about being permeable and interoperable. Permeable and interoperable. You know, let's keep reducing it until we have the PI mode, or what I'd like to suggest is the PI ALA mode as the vision name for where we want hybrid to go in the future. And, and now I'll laugh myself off the stage. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, David. PI ALA mode, I like that. <laughs>